Welcome back, Champions of Melk, to another Neo build guide video. This one is going to be for a dual katana tank build. Now, I'm used to playing very evasive builds. I usually like to avoid damage rather than take it. But this is a really fun build that allows you to just swing into crowds of enemies and not worry about taking damage. Because as you hit the enemies, you will be building up defense through the Mystic Arc available on the Dual Swords. You can also stack a lot of damage reduction taken just in general, but also mid-attack, and those seem to scale multiplicatively. I'd recommend putting in some Steel Talismans, and there you go. You really don't have to worry about taking hits. You can run into boss fights and feel like you are the boss yourself, and just go into town with your favorite active dual skills. This build is heavily inspired by one made by Xenoswarm, and I'm going to link that in the description because it's a really great build. His is entirely focused on damage reduction, but I've been trying to balance both damage dealing and damage reduction, and it worked out really, really well. So not much to worry about in New Game Plus, at least. Maybe this will change in later new game cycles or when the Abyss comes out and enemies start dealing some absurd damage. But for now, you really don't have to worry about being able to balance damage dealing with damage reduction. So I went full Oni Shibata, bold in the boorish, which for the first few pieces is entirely focused on survivability. But then towards the end, you get that 7% high attack damage as well as the 20% key recovery speed. So you can be putting out more attacks, particularly with things like Water Sword and other things. Since you won't be using Momentum, you're going to have to use the other Mystic Art that uh, focuses on the damage reduction. Having that key recovery speed is really handy, and the best skills that Dual Cats have are mostly in that high stance. So I went full Oni Shibata for this build. The reason you want Dual Swords on this build is because of its... Firm Resolve Mystic Art. Now this will stack damage reduction for every hit you put on an enemy. And so, things like Water Sword, which hits extremely quickly, are going to really help you. Low Stance is also a really good way to stack this up if you don't want to use Water Sword and you opt instead for Windstorm. Windstorm is not a bad way to stack it up either, but it's going to hit the enemy a lot less than Water Sword. So. A good way to start off a fight that you know is going to be tough and you might take some damage, Water Sword that enemy, does great damage, and it's going to stop you from taking damage. And then once you've got those stacks ready, you want to switch to using things like Cherry Blossom or Sign of the Cross, but especially Cherry Blossom because of its excellent hyper armor properties. And the fact that that long animation, you're going to be taking very little damage because of all the damage taken mid-attack reduction and you've got that bonus from the golden gourd for the damage and it's just a very high damage move in general for the individual gear pieces themselves i'd recommend the ogo nagame masamun part of the multitude of hopes set that with tokachiro's gourd is going to give you 10.7 percent cherry blossom damage and that is a really good skill to use on this build because it's got a nice long attack animation that you will be taking a lot of reduced damage during and it does a lot of damage here you're going to have the urn splitter hatchets or the smirk wiper, whichever you'd prefer, but most of the time you're going to need to be using those dual swords for the damage reduction mystic art. For your ranged weapons, you could put in the warrior of the west bow here. I personally don't. I've just got this purple slot in to show you that you can get a nice boost to life if you have that in there. And then for the gear pieces themselves, you want to be prioritizing life, key, and damage reduction taken including elemental damage. I also have Untouched Ninjutsu and Shuriken Kunai damage splashed in here because on my version of the build I have a bit more dexterity than what I'm going to show you and I like the option of taking targets out from range, throwing weapons and such, but uh, it's also nice to not be using your quick chain scrolls, poison shurikens, power pills if you fit that in. So Untouched Ninjutsu is nice, but if you prefer the Untouched Omyo or active skill damage of your choice there, throw those Inheritables in instead. For the chest, there is a defense bonus from the 
I'm rid of gauge that I don't have slotted in here that I would if I was really prioritizing survivability. But I'm trying to mix in damage, ninjutsu, and survivability, so I've made some concessions there. But you really want to get that life roll because you get a really nice value off the chest. For the gloves, you want to be prioritizing damage. And one thing I noticed was I was not able to roll temper on any active skill damages. So I had to use an inheritable to put that water sword damage on there. So just something to consider. Uh, but you really want to make sure attack shows up on there. But otherwise, just kind of suit that to your preferences. For the waste guard, I like to have that key recovery bonus off the Amrita gauge on there because running out of key is one of the ways you can get yourself into trouble in this build. Facet wind to recover, you want to have that on either the waste guard or the greaves because they offer you kind of the least useful things to temper on. And tenacity is nice to have somewhere if you're using quick change scrolls because if you have to quick change and you're on fire or you're poisoned, Often that tick will prevent the quick change from going off and you'll just die right off the bat. So tenacity is good to fit on. And then on the boots, dash key consumption, dodge key consumption, not too much useful here. I've got my ninjutsu skills here because I my version of the build has a bunch of ninjutsu splashed in. Uh, but really the, the primary focus, you want to have those quick change scrolls, you want to have poison shurikens because when you get that uh, accessory tempering going, you want to make sure melee damage versus poison shows up on both of those because that's a really nice meaty value, 25%. That stacks to 50, basically. Um, but if you're not worried about doing damage with ranged weapons, you can kind of move off the Shrook and Kunai damage and just have attack and your active skill damage on every piece. Or perhaps you can find life inheritables off the chest if you want to go really hard into the damage reduction and put that on every piece because the value is the best on the chest. Uh, you could also put in elemental damage taken reductions or elemental damage taken while guarding reductions if you're trying to go more for survivability. And for the accessories, really the only thing I'd strongly recommend is having that melee damage versus a poisoned enemy because it's really easy to poison enemies. It lasts a very long time, and it's gonna be doing damage over time at the same time, but really it's mostly about that incredible 50% extra damage you can do to a poisoned enemy. For the Jutsu, I would like you to fit in the poison producing you know, thing of your choice. I like the Shruken best. That might be because I've put in all that Shruken Kunai damage that might affect the status buildup. But I found that Poison Shuriken is the best way to get your enemy poisoned. This weapon buff is not as reliable. I found that that's probably the worst option you have. The Blister Beetle Powder bombs are very good, but you can't fit as many of them as with the Shuriken Kunai. And you also have the option of using Poison Arrows, which aren't bad either. So this will apply a buff for a period of time. It's not going to use up one for every arrow, so this is a pretty good option, but I'd probably recommend the Poison Shuriken as the top uh, choice. And you just want to poison those enemies that you really want to take down fast. You don't have to do it to every enemy, but the ones with a lot of health you want to poison. And for the Omyo, the two biggest ones I'd recommend, one, number one, with a capital one, if you can capitalize numbers, don't think, anyway. The Steel Talisman, that'll increase your defense for a long time. Much more useful than the Protection Talisman, which will just, you know, give you a few free hits. Which you don't really need to worry about on this build. You can take plenty of free hits. And the Steel Talisman will reduce that damage significantly. And the Barrier Talisman. So since you can't fit too much heart onto this build, and you're going to want to keep attacking constantly, be able to block, be able to take key damage, and be able to, number one, attack, because that's how you reduce the damage you take both because it's going to be stacking that dual katana mystic art and because you're going to have all that damage reduction mid attack stacked barrier talisman is very very useful as well maybe not as useful as the steel talisman but very very useful to have that extra key recovery speed for the guardian spirit i chose genbu as the primary 
for two reasons. One, it gives you an enormous bonus to the defense that you're going to be getting from your soul cores. Gives you damage taken minus 5%, just off the bat, all damage taken can be reduced, which is excellent. That'll go up once you start to be able to level up your guardian spirits. And elemental damage taken minus 15%. The reason I'd like you to choose that as your primary over in a Sasau is because you can get some of that damage taken mid-attack while having this as your secondary guardian spirit. So that'll be cut in half to 7.5%. But if you're using Genbu as your secondary, one, you're not going to be getting that 1.25% or the 25% bonus. You're going to be getting minus 18% bonus to the defense you're getting from your soul cores. And while that value is higher than the 5%, you can still get plenty of that 15% or, you know, 50% of it, having it as your secondary. So I'd recommend keeping Inesasso as your secondary and going with Genbu as the primary guardian spirit. But if you alter the stats of your build, you're going to need a sizable amount of strength as well as 10 courage to have that damage taken uh, active. So if you play with the stats of your build, it's going to be a lot easier to fit in Genbu over in Asasso as well. So just something to consider. So for the stats, you can have a bare minimum constitution, a splash of heart if you have the points left over, that 10 courage and the 33 strength to activate that damage taken mid attack from an Asasso Guardian Spirit, 81 stamina so that you can get that B agility uh, from your pretty sizable equip load. Unfortunately, you have to spec pretty heavily into stamina. And then 99 skill for your dual swords. And you want to remodel those to scale off a skill even more. That's the primary scaling stat for those. And then for dexterity and magic, kind of as you like it. On my version of the build, I do spec more into dexterity. Uh, and a little bit less in the magic, but that soft cap for these stats hits at 50. So you're going to start getting less ninjutsu and less omyo once you go above 50 for each stat you point in, uh, for, you're putting in. Uh, so at 50, you're going to get be getting the maximum return. You're going to have plenty of duration on both your omyo self buffs and your quick change talismans and you'll still have a sizable amount of damage that you'll be doing with ninjutsu skills as well max capacity so 50 is a good place to stop but 30 would be the low end i would recommend for either of these two stats if you're trying to fit more stat into heart uh you know or elsewhere so you can alter these to your liking but i'm pretty sure this would be the optimal stat spread for this build but it's malleable, you can change it up as you like it. The soul cores I'd recommend for this build are mostly Onryoki. That's gonna give you a really nice chunk of damage taken mid attack down, that 10%. And then the Kasha soul core, that life train off a yokai ability hit, you can send this out and be using your active skills and be gaining a ton of life back when it's hitting the enemy. So it's a good way to kind of go into a group of humans or yokai, throw that in, and then rush in yourself and start dealing damage. You're going to be getting a ton of life back, and you're going to be stacking up that damage reduction off your Mystic Art. So Kasha is really helpful, and it's also got that great movement speed buff when you absorb Emrita. So that's a nice choice, but really Onryoki is the most important one to choose if you're trying to put a Takemaru in there. Uh, or something else for just dealing pure damage. But that life train off the yokai ability hit is pretty, pretty handy uh, and lets you just focus on attacking. And all of the little tick damages you're going to be taking from your enemies are just going to be refilled immediately off that life train. The clan I recommend for this build is Honda Clan. This will give you an 80% chance of taking half damage when you're at full health, and it gives you an enormous active skill damage boost of 28%. These are when you're at Elder rank. That 24% increase may be bugged, so it may not be around for long, so I'd recommend taking advantage of that. This is an excellent clan for any build. Probably especially light armored builds would benefit from that damage taken halved. You really don't have to worry about taking damage much in this build, even when you don't have your buffs on. Uh, but that active skill damage is excellent for the build. That helps you keep 
putting out a lot of damage while you're water sorting, whirlwinding, any of those active skills that you have slotted into your tree will do a lot more damage while you're taking less damage doing them. So if you have questions about the build setup below, just let me know. I will be responding to all the comments. Uh, but now let's just take a look at some gameplay and how to play the build, some tips about that. So against human opponents, you can just kind of trade at will. Cherry Blossom is one of the best. It's kind of tough to get a human opponent to sit still for Water Sword, but Cherry Blossom, they will not poise you out of that and you'll just be able to deal heavy damage over and over again to your opponent. For yokai or bosses in general, you want to make sure you're applying that poison debuff. Get behind him if you can, and land a few water swords to open up your attack. That's going to stack your firm resolve mystic art very quickly and very high. And then after that, you can kind of just use whatever you want or just continue using water sword. Now, my build has a bunch of ninjutsu in it, so I can walk into a fight and kind of pick off some of the more annoying enemies, particularly ones that attack at range very quickly from a distance. It's helpful for finishing off enemies at range, but not necessary. You really just want to make sure you have those poison shuriken and a quick chain scroll, or whatever you like to poison your enemies with. I definitely prefer the shuriken. So, Water Sword is my favorite opener for fights, especially against Yokai. The only drawback of it is it doesn't have a whole lot of hyper armor. So while you won't be taking a lot of damage if you get hit out of Water Sword, you will stagger and it'll, you know, break your attack in the middle of it. If you don't like Water Sword, the build also works really well with the Whirlwind attack, uh, but it doesn't stack up those firm resolve damage reduction stacks quite as quickly. However, the advantage of it is it has a ton of hyper armor and you can start it up really fast and just kind of poise through attacks. Dying with this build is pretty difficult, especially if you're using the water sword and stacking up your damage reduction really high. Uh, but in the event you do take a lot of hits, I'm kind of just taking hits on purpose here from one of the hardest hitting enemies of the game. You can just back off for a second, get your key back because you don't want to get winded while you're taking damage uh, and heal up and it's just kind of ridiculous how good this build is at wading into even groups of enemies groups of yokai groups of humans and just dishing out shitloads of damage and if you run into trouble throw out that wheel the kasha wheel and it'll start doing damage alongside you and healing up the bits of chip damage that you're going to be taking from your enemies uh, and one thing I would recommend doing is running through ambushes and then just kind of running back and trashing all the enemies as they swing at you, just because it's a lot of fun. Um, I played through this game just kind of avoiding ambushes and trying to play smart, but a nice thing about this build is you can run in and kind of play it like it's Dynasty Warriors or something. So again, sub if you want more. Let me know if you have questions in the comments and stay milky.